Welcome to another episode of Talk About It Tuesday. It is June 28th, 2022, and we are ready to turn this thing up. Of course, you already know I am B. Brown, the revolutionary, and we have been going this whole month real strong for Juneteenth. So let's hear it for Juneteenth, because that's where we at this day in time. We like to establish ourselves um, and talk about some great people that have paved the way. But before we do that, I'm going to let you know that we have an all-female panel here today. And we're going to be talking about some very important things that's going on in the world today. So, of course, I already told you I am B. Brown, the revolutionary. Ladies, introduce yourselves. Of course, Hi, I'm Bianca. I'm 28 years old, uh, mother to three beautiful children, um, and I'm excited for the panel today. Thank you guys for having me. Awesome. Hello, everyone. You know I'm Sunshine. Blessings. Nice to see y'all. Hey, I'm Tanja. Tanja Brown. I'm B. I'm Brandy, the revolutionary sister-in-law. Nice to meet you guys again. Yes, ma'am. And we have also one more person. Boop. Oh, Miss Nikki. Good evening, ladies. How are you? Blessings. Blessings. How, are you? How are you? Well, well, nice to see you all. Nice to see you as well. Now I was so, logging in, so I missed the very I missed the very beginning. Um, well, we haven't started anything yet. Um, we okay. just introduced okay. ourselves, so you can go ahead and do that as well. Okay, well, my name is Nikara Lemon, and I go by um, the nickname Nikki Six. Also, my poetic name is Miss Led. All right, so of course, we have a poet in the building, y'all. Y'all know this. Yes. And today, we're going to be addressing some things, but before we get into any of that, I just want to ask the panel like, we'll, we'll always start. Um, from first to last, okay, so we'll have order that way. But how is everybody doing? Like, how has this month been for you, and how do you feel about Juneteenth? Miss Singleton, can you answer that for me? Um, I think Juneteenth is, um, I think it's, it's a very powerful um, day for, like, Black people as a whole. Um, but I do feel like we don't celebrate it as um, as grand as we should, like how they celebrate, you know, the 4th of July and other holidays. I feel like this should be celebrated better. Um, and as far as like how I'm feeling this month is like, I'm like here and there. Okay. Sunshine? Well, for this month, you know, I feel extra black, you know, because I'll be black on the inside, black on the outside this month. However, it's been this month, last year's Juneteenth, like no one knew about it. Like it was just fresh. Like it was just like a thing. Now people are like, they're taking the effort to like understand why this is necessary, why this needs to happen, why black people need to actually celebrate our freedom because we weren't free and July the 4th, 1776, we still slaves. So we have to understand why it is important for us to celebrate our freedom. And I think more black people, that's who I, that's what I talk about, more black people have come to understand why it's so important that we have this day to honor ourselves. And for my month, I wake up every day, so I'm blessed. Blessed and every day highly favored. Awesome. Nikki Six. Well, for me, I have, I, I kind of agree with Sunshine. Well, not kind of, I do agree with her. Um, I was excited to see more people this year being, you know, more involved and in learning and becoming aware of Juneteenth. Um, I've been aware for about 
the last four or five years. And it was, you know, just an amazing breakthrough for me. But at the same time, I didn't want to push it. You know, that's kind of like religion. I didn't want to push it upon everybody else. But I used to preach it and talk about it. So I'm just ecstatic to know that it is becoming a thing with us because it is a part of our past. So I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm looking forward to growing into it with my people. Um, and as far as the month goes, this has been a very... Um, intriguing and interesting and learning month for myself as well. You and I have discussed several things and upon our discussions, it has made me go back to the lab and dig deeper and deeper into, you know, some historic knowledge. So it's been a good month so far. And like I said, compared to last year's Juneteenth, this has been great. Awesome. Miss Brown? Well, I've been aware of Juneteenth since um, at least 40 or plus years. This is how long, how how long I am old. Um, I am a native Texan, born, I, I would still be in Texas if somebody hadn't have uprooted me and brought me to Alabama. But um, <laughs> but Juneteenth has always been a part of my heritage. Um, and I hold, I've always held it near and dear to, um, to everything that I do. I've celebrated Juneteenth since I was, as long as I can remember, at least three. Um, my grandfather was born in 1918, and therefore my great grandmother, which you know they lived a long time. My grandfather lived to be 100. He died um, in 2019. Uh, if he had lived uh, another six months, he would have been uh, 101 years old. My great grandmother, his mother, lived to be 103. So if we do the math. Um, they actually, uh, in Texas, um, they were born into slavery. Not my grandfather, but my great-grandmother's parents were born into slavery since it was just 1865. And a lot of people don't don't think about how close we are to where slavery is, was, and, and now it's only, you know, 1865. So um, my I, I tell people that um, the land that my great-grandfather worked for was stolen from them from him um the only thing that they didn't take from him them was a little plot of land that um the house set on and for years i've grown up with them fighting to try to get this land back um they said that my mother's grandfather who was actually born into slavery um he signed it over by an ex and so Juneteenth, I hold really near and dear to my heart because it's a part of not only um, our culture, but it's a part of my family. It's a part of our history. And if we don't hold on to it, then we'll lose our history. And people need to know just how how that it wasn't so long ago <laughs> that exactly we were slaves. It wasn't long ago. Um, my great grandfather was a slave. So <laughs> I'll never forget that. So, you know, Juneteenth, I'm glad to see that people are celebrating it around the United States, but it's always been a part of our culture in, in Texas. Um, I've celebrated for as long as I, I've, I mean, <laughs> I, it's a surprise to me that people didn't know what Juneteenth was. Wow, that that that's a compelling story. I'm not going to lie. I probably knew about Juneteenth. I'm going to say this may be about the fourth or fifth year. Uh, because I had no idea what Juneteenth was. And that's just the God honest truth. Like no wow. one had made me aware of Juneteenth. It's about 15 years for me, for Juneteenth. About good 15 years. And you'd be surprised how many older people like think it's like, oh, it's a new thing. No, this ain't nothing new. It's just they don't talk about our history, which is in all actuality American history. So they don't teach our history in school. They just teach other history. This is true. Well, they don't teach mm -hmm. any history nowadays in school. It's, it's as if they are trying to rewrite the actual history for whatever reason. But it's the, it's um. We all know the reason. It's so important for us to teach our children what true history is, what the true history is, not what they put in the textbooks, but what exactly. it really is. Yep. The ugly, the good, the ugly, the bad. They need to know. Oh yeah, the yeah. big picture. Period. Indeed. Most people are lucky. I had my grandmama used to, to tell us things about the, the, the depression, all kinds of things growing up. So I knew about like Tulsa. People are just learning about Tulsa. That's insane. People mm -hmm. wrote wow. was actually just a movie. 
No, my love. That was real life. No, that was a true story. That yes. really, really happened. So people don't, people think that our history is like, it's a movie. No, it, yeah, it is a movie. It's a movie. It's not a pleasant one. It's life and a movie. So they don't teach us what we need to know. And we don't have people around us that teach us what we need to know. So we have Correct. to learn to educate ourselves. Google is free. Sure is. Very. You know, that we forget about, you know, like what's lying, what's lying under Lake um, Garnersville, like all these yeah. lakes around here. What about that mm -hmm. history? How they flooded out all the African American, um, you know, communities that were thriving here in Alabama, and mm -hmm. and now on these Fourth of July, that all these people run into these lakes. You run into the lakes of, if you was to go and swim under them, you would see whole communities, whole communities, yeah. barns, the houses, and everything. Um, yeah. like they tried to erase it, but it's still there. Yeah, that's what they try to do. They try to erase our history. Oh, yes. And I teach my children that our history did not start with Roots. Roots was a good Thank read. You. It was a good story. But our history did not start there. Because they didn't steal. And so slaves. that is the main thing. Teachers and doctors right. and mothers and fathers and mathematicians and, and scholars and healers and teachers. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Where they get all of their technology from, they stole from us when they stole us from our land. So, you know. Exactly. Keep it cute. To be honest, we taught them a lot of the stuff that they know today, but, you know, we don't get a lot of. Mm. Support, yes. Pink. I don't think it's that we taught them. We're still teaching them a lot of the things that they are that they know today because yeah. you know, oh, yeah. the people that they hire when they hire people, um you gotta think about who's putting the work behind that. But mm -hmm. with, they got a face to get the credit, but the person that's putting in the work often is people that look just like you and I. The reason why is because they weren't raised to do the work. They're raised to let somebody else to do it and take the credit for it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're raised to say, well, you know, just go ahead and do it. You know, um, you're, you're at least being able to do it and just let, you know, just mm -hmm. it's that okay. complacency, that complacency kills. You know, you did it. You know, your parents just say, well, you know, you did it. You know it's your work, so don't worry about it, you know, but you do have to worry about it because at some point in your life, you have to stand up and say, you know what? Why am I doing all the work and you getting all the credit? Right. Boom. My face be the face that gets the credit. Is it because That's why they made patents. That That's just why they made patents. So that they can steal all, all the work from black people, patent it for their own. That's how they make their money. And how they still make their money mm -hmm. off the black people's work. And, and but they don't want to talk about that, though. That is true, and I will say that for I know that for the truth, because mm -hmm. for the longest, for the last past five years, I worked at the foundry. The foundry is ninety eight percent African Americans that are out there doing that work. They're out there breathing in toxic dust. They're out mm -hmm. there working in filth. They're out there working in and temperatures that no one should work in they're out there breaking their backs you're made to get a physical when you go in but hmm. six months later to five years later because you're chasing a dollar mm -hmm. your back is all messed up mm. are they paying for it are you able to say you know what i'm not going to break my back anymore and go to another company and work no you're not why because they put these physicals in place mm -hmm. and now you're not able to get a job. You're stuck working there where you have no opportunities for advancement, where you're mm -hmm. killing yourself, while you're or you're taking mm -hmm. toxic dust home to your family. Mm -hmm. You're watching mm -hmm. the schools in it. I mean, they have you sign these documents about cancer and all these different things. For most of them, once they get up to the age, they can't go anywhere, but they got cancer and all these different things. And what are you doing it for? Yes, you got to pay your bills. Yes, you got to take care of your families. But at some point, you want to get up out of those foundries and you want to get into the other jobs that they have, like into the manager trainee jobs that they're bringing all of the other people in because they got a quote unquote college degree. Wow. Mm -hmm. the job right. They, they, if, if yes. they paid them $1,000 an hour to do it. 
And more often than not, it's a bunch of nepotism because someone's related to someone else. Just complete nepotism. It is. They keep it all in the family. That's how they make their money. That they use like, this is this is this is legal legal slavery because what they, they they take your taxes. You pay. You you, you call out of work. You're getting fired. Someone's going to else take your job. What can you do? Right. You go to work. All, what can you do? Well, I know at the foundry they talk to those guys like they're dogs. They talk mm -hmm. to them all kinds of ways. They out there breaking their backs. The foundry, working in the foundry, that's over 100 degree temperature because you're working around molten metal. Wow. And what are they doing it for? Because they have children, because they have a family, because yes. no one will give them an opportunity because many of them have been put into the system because they didn't have any other choice because they didn't have a granddaddy or brother or sister or uncle on the police force that can get them out of trouble. Or right. well, you know what? He's a young, you know, he he just made a mistake. We hmm. just come on down here, Billy Joe, and take him on home and give him a paddling or something. They don't do <laughs> our young black brothers like that. Thanks. They don't all call their parents to take them home. They throw them into these jails and into these systems and and pretty much charge them with crimes that they pretty have not committed, that they talk them into saying that they've done. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Because we exactly. teach our, our to just go with what they say. Just say, just say yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching my child to say yes, sir and yes, ma'am. Oh no, person No, ma'am. I teach them that at all. I teach them to say yes and no. I don't that teach them to say. do the sir and ma'am. With I a lot of people don't know that that sir is a synonym for slave. I remain. I do not teach my children to say that at all. Ooh. You address your teachers as a yes, no. <laughs> they have a problem with that, then they just have a problem. <laughs> yeah, you call home. Yeah, tell them the phone home because you're going. You're saying yes <laughs> or no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on. I don't want to mess with mine. My my family bleeds blue, so they don't want to mess with mine. Right, but right. I call right. my dad in heartbeat mm -hmm. for real. But that's what they do. They take our kids. It's from the it's from the cradle to the schoolyard to the prison yard. That's, that's right. why they have our children from the cradle, to the schoolyard to the prison yard. That's why they take away all. You see, that's the way the system is designed for us. That's the way it's designed for us. It's always been, and we way. have to we have to think outside the box and overcome that. Yeah, we and I teach my kids to be smarter than that. You know, okay, you do what you need to do to make the grades in school, but you're gonna come home and and, and learn a whole different lesson here. That's correct. Because it goes beyond those books. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, those books are designed to keep you on a certain level of ignorance. That's, That's why right. other countries, the education levels are so much higher than the United States. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, they want to keep us dumbed down. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Some yeah. folks don't know how to comprehend things properly, so that's why they have to be dumbed down if you want to keep it a being. True. Yeah. Yes. True that. They don't look like us. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Miss Bobby Moon. She says, hello, ladies. Um, she's a frequent flyer of the show, and I hey, also want to Bobby. say thank you, Miss Bobby, for always coming through and supporting us. Hello. Yes, you're in for a real show tonight, honey, because we finna let it go. We finna tell it like it's supposed to be told. Okay. <laughs> so um, before we go any further, ladies, um, I want to go ahead and get into these five influential black people because you know, just like I know. Every now and then, they may say, uh, Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King, but they never tell us about our true history. So I encourage every mother and father out there, talk to your children about our history, okay? So the first one, let's talk about Alice Coachman. Track and field star Alice Coachman make history at the 1948 Olympics Games, uh, becoming the first black woman to win an Olympic gold medal. Alice Coachman made history um, in London where she leaped to a record breaking height of five feet, six inches with five feet, six and one eighth inches in the high jump finals to become the first black woman to win an Olympic gold medal. She went on to support young athletes and older retired Olympic veterans through the Alice Coachman Track and Field Foundation. Okay, how many of y'all knew about her? Mm -mm. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. I was a track scholarship and didn't know nothing about Alex Coachman. Okay. Oh, let me okay. find out. All right. Let's go to the next one. Otis Boykin. Noteworthy inventions include a wire precision resistor and a control unit for the pacemaker. When he died in 1982, he had 26 patents in his name. Okay. Um, Otis Boykin graduated from Fisk College in 1941 and took a job with the Majestic Radio and TV Corporation. He later worked at P.J. Nielsen. Uh, research laboratories, he began to invent products on his own with some of his noteworthy inventions, including a wire precision resistor used in televisions and radios and a control unit for the pacemaker. Okay. Baby, greatness, just pure greatness. Okay. Ha, let's talk about <laughs> Mildred Dolores Loving and her husband, Richard Perry Loving. They were an American married couple who were jailed and also the plaintiffs in the landmark U.S. Supreme Court case, Loving versus Virginia, that took place in 1967. Their marriage has been the subject of three movies, including the 2016 drama Loving and also inspired songs as well. The Lovings were charged with interracial marriage. They, are, they were arrested for violating Virginia's Racial Integrity Act, honey. They moved to Washington, D.C., but wanted to return to their home state. With the help of the American Civil Liberties Union, they took on this decision by filing a lawsuit. In 1967, the Supreme Court ruled in their favor, striking down the Virginia decision as unlawful. The law was seen as a violation of equal protection of the law under the 14th Amendment. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew, honey? Think of that word integrity. That says a lot. Right. I, was I know it. Integrity. I was about Key to word. say integrity of who? Of whom? Well, I, I just took the liberty of looking up the, the, the definition so I can make sure that I was correct. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles and moral uprightness. So who? Just, <laughs> just, just let that ponder. Integrity. Right. The, the, of the, 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 the of, in, Virginia integrity law. Of what people? Who has the integrity? The Integrity Act, the racial Who had it? racial integrity. Who had it mm. though? Who had the integrity, girl? Who had the integrity? I want to know. They right. They were gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep it honest. They said they was gonna keep their race pure and uh, honest. That's what they I'm were a, saying. They yeah, were girl, I'm a, since <laughs> when? <laughs> I'm gonna keep my thoughts to myself. Where they was so. gonna. They was Since when? And honest on paper, because we know that they've been raping our women ever since, you know. Ooh, <laughs> since honey. before the slave trade, when they was, you know what? Yeah. Stop, don't do it, Tanja. I'm about to go to bed already, y'all. Don't do it. I don't think that's no sunshine. Don't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for my bonnet right now, Nikki. I'm looking for my bonnet right now. Okay. I'm, for the bonnet. I'm about to go to bed. Well. well if y'all uh, think that's crazy, let me give you a little bit more of the story because as I was researching, I found out that an officer came into their house and shined a light on them while they was laying in the bed and said, what are you doing in the bed with her? And she said, this yeah. is my husband. Girl, I'd have been like sleeping. What you doing in bed? Sleeping. What I'm you a doing in my house? Exactly. I'm, here's my blanket. I Where's the blanket? I'm turning the light off, you. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm done. I gotta go. Yeah. So it's past my bedtime. That was right. wow. Like I made sure I yeah. added that part. The um, the the racial integrity act. Like bro. Like wow. Integrity. That's where we at with that integrity? thing. Integrity. Strong mm. moral principles. Okay. Mm. I'm not okay. Talk but. Uh, when I tell you, Richard wasn't studying nothing they said, honey. And uh, matter of fact, they grew up in a town together where um, they were used to being around other races. So it, it didn't mean anything to them. But mm. once they became adults, they seen how divided mm. we really are. So how right. divided we still are. 
<laughs> and still are. Let's keep it moving, and ladies. To this day. <laughs> Abraham Galloway, a former slave, union spy, military recruiter, militant abolitionist, advocate for black suffrage, North Carolina Republican Party organizer, delegate to the convention of the 1868, and a state senator. His mother, Hester Hankins, was a slave, and his father, John Wesley Galloway, was a white boatman. At the age 10 or 11, he apprenticed to a brick mason, y'all, and soon became a master brick mason. While he was a spy, especially when he was in the Deep South, Galloway experienced many different perspectives of the life as a slave in various places and the horrors and the atrocities slaves went through. These insights may have given him a deeper desire to help slaves achieve freedom, abolish slavery and gain equal rights under the law. He became a powerful grassroots organizer, a coalition builder and an orator. Mm. Mr. Abraham Galloway, y'all. Wow, never heard of him. Never heard of him, never our, heard of him before. Our people have faced so many things and yet and still they rise. Okay, this is our last one, y'all. Hmm. Miss Mary Beatrice Davison, honey, Kenner is an inventor of the of numerous products we use today and has the most patents of any African American woman. Kenner was born on May 17, 1912, in Monroe, North Carolina. Her father was an inventor. His name was Sidney Nathaniel Davidson. She holds the record for the most patents awarded to a black woman by the United States government, y'all. Kenner's first wow. and most, yes, her uh, first and most noted patent was, the 19, was in 1957 for the sanitary belt. The, oh. um, the precursor invention to sanitary pads, y'all. So thank okay. God for her, oh, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Girl, so as y'all can see, this is her invention. It's showing, um, you know, her idea and how she did that thing. Can y'all imagine back in the day they had to wear a belt? <laughs> I mean, not for nothing. That looks a little bit more sturdy and secure. Than, uh, okay, because the slip and the slide that be go. I'm just that looks more secure. That's all I'm saying. Keep it in place. <laughs> and y'all, I truly. <laughs> I truly do wonder, like with with these inventions and these patents, do they family still own these patents? Because y'all know uh, the uh, oppressors are slick. Uh -huh. Quick from under somebody's nose, like listen. Yes, girl. It's, yes, I wonder. Do they? So I really wonder, are they still holding um, on on to these uh, patents and things like that? Because okay, let's just let's just be real, real quick, okay. It seems like to me, back then when there was a little bit more segregation, black people had a little a better thought process, and they made things happen a little bit better because they had no choice. And it's like now, um, I kind of feel like we as a people been numbed down to just take whatever we've been given. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that mentality of turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. Have been taught. I live like Malcolm. By, By any means necessary. necessary. Yes. And, okay. and very unapologetically, too. If you, kind of feel, you feel some kind of way about it, there's the door. Right. I'm, it's my black people first. Everybody else is secondary. Exactly. So black people have been taught that you... Be, and, and it's not even that we have been taught to be so. Black people are... We are such caring and giving and nurturing people. We are. Yeah. We had we have to be taught to be violent. Taught to be aggressive taught to be vile. We had to be taught these things. And who do we learn them from? But I do digress. Anyway, so that whole turn the other cheek, show that you are not the brutal beast that they say that you are, that's where we got that from. Mm -hmm. to, be, to, to, to be seen as human by other people. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. to, be mm -hmm. as, to be seen as we have to hold our, look, we, we can't even grieve properly. Right. We holler, yell, scream, and wail. We call the police. They blowing right. up buildings because they, they the, the daddy said no. It's give them a cheeseburger. No, 
No, we have, been talk about it too. we have been taught to be docile, even more docile than we already are. Mm -hmm. That's where we got the complacency yeah. from. And we had to learn it from somewhere else as well. Well, they yeah. teach it because they want us to, they teach us to say, you know, we'll do this because our parents tried to shield us. I know my parents did, tried to shield us from some of the things that they had to experience being okay. that they were in segregated schools, you know, um, mm -hmm. and they were, they would go as they did with my mother. They, she was in a black school in Henderson, Texas. And when the actual, um, when they uh, when they came down, Brown versus Board of Education, and said they had to integrate the schools. They didn't just integrate the schools. What they did is they went into these these other schools and they picked the black children that they wanted to go to those schools. They picked mm -hmm. them. They had fair skin because of the color mm -hmm. of their hair, because of all these different things, and oh, that's yeah. what they allowed to integrate the school. Mm -hmm. So, like a lot of other things that they stole, like the Republican Party, you know, I, as you were saying, he was a part of, they stole that. In 1964, it was the Republican Party that led yes. the civil rights movement. But because the Rockefeller so Republicans, strong, the Rockefeller ones, yeah, like those. They yeah. so strong that mm -hmm. they stole that party. They started to just kind of like, oh, they're just going to keep on voting Republican. And they have, and many Black people still have done that because that mm -hmm. was the party of their grandfathers, the party of their ancestors. And you see what they have done. It's become a whole party of fools and thieves and thugs and, and, White supremacy, su supremacy. Right, Holiday right. Thugs, mm -hmm. riders. We saw what they did on 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 um, January sixth. Had it been us, what would have happened? Ooh. But I thought Blue Lives Matter. I thought Blue Lives Matter. Didn't they kill a black police officer? A Blue Lives Matter. Thank you. Remember they, when that they, black woman? A black one, white one. They didn't even care. They don't. They, they didn't even care what they was doing. They mm -hmm. love this country so much. They love this country so much, and they're trying to protect it. From the thugs and all these black people is coming in and taking up all the resources. Y'all done went up there and, and tore up the dang capital. Trying to what? kill the vice president and the speaker of the house. What is wrong with y'all? And they're getting three month sentences allowed to go home and relax as they kill the man. They were just following their leader. Yes. Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> Don't shh. They be listening to I know to we them. ain't talking about Agent Orange. Oh Girl, yeah, baby. Know, they be, they, they were just following their lead. See, that's 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 the type of you know that's the that was the real niggerdom, if you ask me. If there was ever a nigger moment on, on in history, that was a nigger moment. Yes, yeah. climbing up the walls and whatnot. Like they were following their leader. leader. Uh huh. No, because he, he called out uh, the people in a tweet. In yeah. a tweet, he let the people go in a tweet. Right. Hangman nooses. Hangman nooses. And, uh, and on the on the Capitol because they were gonna hang who? Pence? Were they going at the exactly. Pence? Pence? Yeah, they were. See, I just watched the trial the recently. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. okay. They said when they were attacked and 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 they informed him instead of him, you know, going to address that immediately. He gets on Twitter and says, you know, this is what you get, Mike Pence. You should have followed orders. Blase, blase. What? <laughs> what? But that's that's your so first bad. response. That's your, so. That's what I said. They were just following their leader. Uh huh. Quick I, 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 we didn't even do this when Rodney King got beat. Right, girl. <laughs> Come on now. You know, had it been us, it but they'd have been scraping us off the wall still. <laughs> I'm talking about it would have I mean, been seriously. a pure, bloody Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and yes. Friday. A massacre. Mm. Listen. Yeah. Another massacre of black people. Another massacre of mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a massacre in the house that we built. <laughs> well, I think that um, conversation can lead us right on into the introduction of our main topic, Willie Lynch. Mm. So we're, uh, without further ado, um, just pay attention to this, and we're going to definitely talk about it. The final Juneteenth edition. Have you read the Willie Lynch letter? 
This speech was delivered by Willie Lynch on the bank of the James River in the colony of Virginia in 1712. This now infamous letter gives both African Americans and Caucasians some insight concerning the brutal and inhumane psychology used upon African slaves. Here's an excerpt from the letter. Something to think about. In my bag here, I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if it is installed correctly, it will control slaves for at least 300 years. My method is simple, and any member of your family or your overseer can use it. I have outlined a number of differences among slaves, and I take these differences and I make them bigger. I use fear, distrust, and envy for control purposes. These methods have worked on my modest plantation in the West Indies, and it will work throughout the South. Take this simple little list of differences and think about them. On the top of my list is age, but it is there only because it starts with an A. The second is color or shade. There is intelligence, size, sex, size plantations, status on plantation, attitude of owners, whether the slaves live in the valley, on the hill, east, west, north, south, have fine hair, coarse hair, or is tall or short. Now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of action. But before that, I shall assure you that distrust is stronger than trust and envy is stronger than adulation, respect, or admiration. Don't forget, you must pitch the old black male versus the young black male and the young black male against the old black male. You must use the dark slaves versus the light slaves and the light slaves versus the dark slaves. You must use the female versus the male and the male versus the female. You must also have your white servants and overseers distrust all blacks, but it is necessary your slaves trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. Gentlemen, these kits are the keys to control. Use them, have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. If used intensively for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful. Thank you, gentlemen. Something to think about. And there you have it. Bullshit. It's still, mm. And it's here we today. are today. Distrust is still happening in, today. In that same We're state. Now they got some differences. It's whether you live where you live, whether you live in the projects, are you oh, living yeah. in, in the white mm -hmm. folks' quarter, the are suburbs, you in Oxford, mm -hmm. or you live over in Aniston? Oh yeah, are you, you know, yeah. or live in the ghetto, live in the suburbs, like like that. Yeah. live in the counties. Well, what school mm -hmm. do you go to? You know, when they mm -hmm. talk to our kids, well, what school do you go to? Hmm. Do you go to public oh. school? You go to chart. You oh oh. You go to public school, private yeah. schools. Oh, you in the mm -hmm. county school, yeah. or are you in the city school? Hmm. All these differences. Oh, you want to go to the city school? Well, you have to pay to go to the city school. Hmm. Come on yeah. with it now. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I felt agree. like it was a reason to put this on yeah. the last show of the month because at the end of the day, a lot of our people today just don't get it like this is 90 percent of the reason why we are behind left in the dust because they are still controlling our mind yes. miss singleton what you think about this um i think it's bullshit um i think that um black people as a whole we really need to come together and really talk about this this problem that is this Willie Lynch letter. Because not only is a lot of this stuff is still going on in our communities, whether it is what he was talking about, the lights against the darks. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of us in school, either 10, 15, 20 years ago, we all heard the oh, you know, the, the lighter girls were more of the, like, popular ones. And, you know, they were calling us darker skin girls, like, oh, telling us to, like, oh, go back to Africa and stuff like that. Like, African booty Remember that one? 
all. Yeah, that was a big one. African like booty, scratcher. booty scratcher, exactly. Mm -hmm. They are all from there. Like it doesn't. It doesn't. Just because they're, you know, the lighter skin doesn't mean that they're not from there either. It's just like that that Eve gene that we all possess inside of us right now. That's that's mm -hmm. what that is. But mm -hmm. um. Another thing is the 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 uh, men versus the women. I had to really dig into a lot of black men in the last couple of weeks because they've had um, some interesting things to say about black women in specific. And I'm not trying to like say that you know their opinions on us are bullshit, but you know, if I if I let you guys know, they were saying that, you know, only black women are combative, we're masculine, we're argumentative. These are some of the things that they were saying about us. And I'm just like, where do you think that we even got any of these quote unquote characteristics that you are putting upon us? Where where do you think that we are getting any of this from? Exactly. So yeah, it, it really, why it, really it is had, too. Exactly. It really why had is me it? Mm -hmm. that y'all would sit here and just really say that this is just us rather than women as a whole because y'all saying like, oh, you know, white women aren't argumentative. What women don't want to argue sometimes? Like, come on. What? Like, come mm -hmm. on. That doesn't make sense. It's just like y'all just are just. And then the manly. It's just like where, where, where does the manly come in with us at? I, I'm not understanding. It just is like, do you feel that we are like built like them? Or are you thinking that we talk like them? Or like I'm, I'm just I was confused because I'm just trying to figure it all out. Where in your guys' minds do you feel like we are? manly well because let I me just say something real quick it really made me mad the way they did michelle obama you know what i'm saying child oh, yes. yes williams and venus williams yes yes, yes. all, all, the, time. Time. all like, the time you can't be a four-figured black woman without them trying to call you some sort of a monkey mm -hmm. oh yeah like, but you, but you know, do y'all remember the masculine thing? It's like men have forgotten what it is to be an actual man. That is why a oh, woman that yeah. who, who can take care of herself, that don't need a man, because back in the day, we they they needed men to simply survive. Men are now exactly. an option; they are no longer a necessity. So any woman that can do for her and 10 times better is deemed as masculine because she has emasculated that man. Mm. Okay? But, but that's the way the system is designed. Thanks. It's <laughs> designed that way. You know, pretty much women which is just now digitized and, and, and it, you understand me, it's just gotten technical the way the world has. It's still there. You know, <laughs> our men aren't, aren't what they used to be because, like I said, the times have changed us. The world has changed us. And we change according to what we see, what we take in, our beliefs, etc. And what you keep pumping into us, which is why I always preach. I tell my kids, genocide is the TV. I don't let my kids do a whole lot of TV. I limit yes. their whole life to watch what they hear, what they can take. They be outside. They be outside. Yeah, I don't know yeah you they know what I mean? Seriously. So, you know, I feel like it's still, it's still in play. I it's have just a question. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, look at the way we think. They they're steady. They're steady breaking us in some form of fashion. Women these days, I keep I keep seeing a difference now on Facebook about you know the way women dress, the way they carry themselves these days. You know, some of them you know understand you know the woman that they are, their value, and like to be covered up, and some of them like to show their you know ASS. And so there's been a debate on that. That's because it's still applying. They're still breaking us. They're still breaking. us. Yes. But if you think about it, they talk about black women are so argumentative. I mean, with the day with these cell phone cameras and everything that we going on right now, we can see that the parents ain't just we we're not the argumentative ones. 
Have we? It's the mayonnaise monster. Have we seen all these Karens going in and acting the ghost and, and, and have to almost get drug? <laughs> okay. I mean, so so they, be uh, me they, they can be a little rowdy too. But I, I mean, have a question. Uh -huh. Do you oh, remember yeah. how back in the day we, were outside, <laughs> we were outside children and that's how we build our yeah. community of friends, our, our family, our village to be outside in the streets? These kids are outside right. anymore. You know what they have in their hands? See? Yeah. But that's we gotta watch outside. now too with our kids being <laughs> outside with all these pedophiles <laughs> running around. We used to have a community that <laughs> looked out for each other. Hey. Yes. We don't ever have yes. a community that looks out for each other. Oh, we, we have one here. We got water hoses where nowadays you can't find a water hose in nobody's yard. You well, used that's to cold. go out as a group and play right. as children. Right. Still you need to right. be home or you need to stay with somebody before the light mm -hmm. lights came on. But now. Every mama was everybody's mama too. Yes, but, right. but now it's, it's as if, you know, right. you look out for your kid, but you're not looking out for nobody else's child that's out there. Yes, exactly. yes. And you exactly. better not try to correct somebody's child because you're probably going to have to fight them, the mama and the daddy. Correct. The exactly. The aunt they too, forget, honey. They call us masculine, but they forget how they broke up our households, how they broke up our homes, yes. as is my grandfather, where they stayed out down where they stole my great grandfather's land. The mm -hmm. black men could not get jobs down there. The women yes. had got jobs cleaning houses. So the yes. black men would get on the on the bus, on the Greyhound bus every Sunday evening. Okay. And they would go 200, 250 miles away so that they can work in a factory Monday mm -hmm. through Friday. They get off on Friday, they get on a bus on Saturday morning, come um, come home, stay overnight. And then get back on the bus at two o'clock the next on that next Sunday evening to come to go back down to work while their wives were getting raped in these houses where they yes. were supposed to be cleaning. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. Supposed to be, um, you know, cleaning and stuff. And they call us angry. Yes, we are angry. We, we are angry to. because we've been put in a predicament that it's we were will never ever to be able to dig or crawl all the way out of mm -hmm. because they keep on breaking the households be, by putting our black men in prisons yes yes and killing yes. our black right. men killing the it black men mm -hmm. not yes. you know they can't get jobs yes. you can't have them live in the household with you if you're getting some type of government assistance and, yes. oh yeah really but don't forget they, they, the welfare they, system wasn't they, created for us don't no. forget that it was yeah. not created. It was not. Us. They just use it to tear us further apart. Anyway, exactly. Like people forget about. They want to put every place everything on the black woman. No, where we we have to stop being accountable for everyone, and everyone right. needs to be accountable for themselves. Well, the we are everything. We are America's scapegoat. We you are the know? world scapegoat. The yeah. world, not America, the world. Right. Yeah. Let's keep it the, the world. They act like you know, it's they so act funny. Like they hate us, they yet they need us so much. They need yes. us. Look what happened with Roe versus Wade. Black women shut up and look what happened. We've been mm. telling y'all for decades, for centuries, what was going to happen. Y'all didn't yes. listen. And we shut up and look what happened to y'all's rights. Yeah. We lost mm. ours a long time ago. We don't have no rights. We have right. rights. Okay, we have rights. Y'all have rights. And when we stop fighting for y'all, look what happened. Yep. Mm -hmm. Y'all should learn to listen to us more and be quiet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Talk about you have two kids and one Remember mouth for a reason. That a lot that that affects. You know, they have a blanket that they put on, uh, over all women's bodies. So if you, were, if, if you were in a life or death situation, your life is no longer valued. Your life is no longer value. We already know that the black uh, female uh, uh, maternal uh, uh, fatality is way higher than anybody else's in this United States. Yes. But they don't calculate those numbers. So they well, don't they, they calculated those numbers. I believe they calculated those numbers. And that's why they don't they want to show them. So 
to get to push a robot. If you want to run the black woman, then what what can what's gonna happen? You're gonna kill off the actual um, race by killing off the black women. Oh right. yeah. Well, let's go into this uh, discussion real quick. Um, so I don't know if you guys know who Saucy Santana is, but he has recently um, signed a record deal um, with a, a prominent record company. And, you know, of course, when you start to make a little bit of money, they're going to go back and grab everything that you said, honey. And they're going to oh, bring yeah. it to the forefront. So uh, right here, Saucy Santana is seen um, talking about Blue Ivy. So right here, he's just saying good things about Beyonce. But then he goes to say, I just want to be Blue Ivy, nappy headed, or he put the eye emojis. And then he also says, I'm sorry, but Northwest clears Blue Ivy. Have several car seats, Blue. Just said this yesterday. Like, why are you saying this? And somebody else said, the child. She, she looked dry to me. Uh, Beyonce with that pregnancy glow. And he said, my account was suspended for a tweet about Beyonce. So he is under fire. Um, for making those statements about Blue Ivy, but why is it that we got to be so infatuated with somebody hair is curly, somebody hair is nappy, that person is light skinned, that person is dark skinned? That letter told you everything, and that is why. It just and told can you, I you yeah. about the whole nappy hair situation. Black people do not have nappy hair. We do not. Yeah, we have all. loosely coiled hair. We have tightly coiled hair. The only reason our hair is considered nappy is because we were stolen from the land in which we grew from. We were stolen from our land and brought to this country. We did not have the provision to take care of our hair the way we naturally did. The oils, the berries, the, the fresh water. The, the, the things that, right. we, that are vital to our existence, to black existence, not to white existence, to black existence, was stolen from us. So our hair was unmanageable. That's why it's called nappy. No. Take, you know what? I take pride in oh, my hair is nappy. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate I know it. That's a compliment for me. Thank you. Thank you kindly. It's, it's unlike theirs. You know? My hair grows towards the sun, darling. My hair it grows is. towards the sun no. for a reason. Exactly. Exactly. Okay? We but grow from the earth. Thank but you. But what is nappy? Somebody needs to tell me what is nappy. What is nappy? Because I never understood. I never understood that definition. I never understood the definition of nappy. You know, as never. is nappy. What is nappy? Because well, if they don't comb their hair on a regular basis, it's going to tangle up. And you're mm -hmm. not mad up. Yeah. Anything. It's going it to lights light up. up all kinds of stuff. So lights up. Our hair doesn't light yeah. up. <laughs> you ain't hear me, Nikki. Uh, I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't hear you. What you say? say repeat that. <laughs> the light of it all. But you know. Yes. <laughs> well, um, yes, actually, indeed. so Lisa Ray is also on the fire because she made a comment. Um, about Santana and let's just listen to what she said because when you have a big platform I feel like you have some form of responsibility to yes. the people but honey she's just as ignorant as they come honey but let's just listen to what she said I saw that okay. yes let's listen to what she said honey See, they don't want you to tell the truth now. Hold on, let me bring it up on um, IG. <laughs> See, we have to tell the truth. Things start getting mad when we tell the truth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was, it's, you know, it's, it's so childish to try to bring a child down. Like, why would you do something like that? Okay, yeah. here she go. I think, no, you don't want to know what I think. I do. You know, I do. <laughs> Girl, here we go. Well, let me go. Let me get my little key wine. Cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He said that 
uh, about a baby Bella. <laughs> Girl fight. He couldn't say that about baby Bella because she doesn't have nappy hair. Doesn't make a difference. It's a child. Hmm. I'll but go, I know. I'll put that for 200. Okay. <laughs> you would have been through the <gasps> found him. You already know that. But you know what? I think what those kind of comments, first of all, it would automatically make me go, who the hell and who are you? You don't know me. You don't know her. I don't give a shit. And I would have took it there because I don't think that they even care that much. Of, I don't think they care about his comment, really. Oh, to be honest. Don't. But like <laughs> say, saying Blue Ivy has nappy hair is, is very ridiculous, A. B, yeah. the child is doing better than 99.9% okay. of people in America. Oh and yeah. and like seeing like Blue Ivy against the North, like that's something you may, amongst your little shady group in a text message, you might want to be shady with your friends. But exactly. to put that on Twitter, exactly. it was just, and, and Saucy, you ain't Miss America yourself. I'm Ooh. sorry. I hate when people do that and talk about a kid. Come and on then, with you it. You know what I'm saying? Like you have a lot of things going on with you. you and a I, lot of stuff going on. I think, no, you don't want to know what I think. I do. You know I do. <laughs> All right. So y'all heard what she said, y'all. Like, where does the ignorance begin and end? Like, is there an end for us on the ignorance of us bringing each other down? Like, why do we like to do that so much? I mean, I know why, but when will there be an end point to this? Like, when are we going to come together and say, hey, don't do that? Or is, when are you just going to think for yourself to try to say something good about a child? Like like y'all said, what is nappy hair? Yeah. First of all, that's a child. Yeah, That's a child. Why yeah. are you breeding insecurity of, of any yeah. fashion in a child? It's their oh, insecurity. There is enough like of, there's, yeah. as, as, as a whole, Black women are not taught the value of ourselves. We are not taught that we are worthy of a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. And to hear those kinds of words from people, from those kinds of platforms, who a lot of people actually like, I don't know why they look up to these people. It's, it's asinine to me. It's asinine that you are grown. You what? You like 60? So she was what? Hmm. Two, seven? Like what? That, that is a baby. That breathes. Yes. And it, it, it sounds envious. A little bit, yeah. you ended with yeah. a child. Yeah. For what? What about that small baby made you want to say such hateful and hurtful things to her or about her in yeah. general? And that just shows that a lot of times people, first of all, where do we draw the line? Where do we draw exactly. the line? Where exactly. do we draw the line where we say that this is a beautiful child and that she exactly. has beautiful hair? And exactly. that we are supposed to teach our children and teach our, our children, both males and females, to have self-love, to love yourself for who you are. Yes. You know, there's no reason for us. Now, we all know I've been known to wear a good weave or two, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a time where it was if you didn't have, if you went into a job interview like this, you weren't going to get a job. Why? Why? Because of what your credentials said, it's because they were too focused on what the look was and what people were going to think about exactly. this person when they walk. When people walk in here, what are they going to think? Uh, there exactly. is just a law passed that we can wear our hair the way it grows from our scalp, and people say it's just hair. It's not just hair. Exactly. It's not just. It was just hair. hair. We wouldn't need a crown act. We wouldn't. Need Thank the you. Crown act. To tell us, Thank you. you know, that we can wear our hair in, in locks or braids or whatever without saying and just wear it naturally. It's unprofessional. Unkept. Unprofessional. unprofessional. You That's know, what I always know. I think that um, the thing is with, with with Blue is a lot of people um, thought that she was going to come out. A different way like they didn't think that she was going to come out like how she did because she is a biracial child their expectations of how she how they thought that she would come out didn't meet you know their expectation and they're trying to spew the the hate that they might feel about themselves onto her and I don't appreciate that at all 
it's like a lot of other different um, children that are also biracial that they also need to know that, you know, they are beautiful as well, even though, even if they don't come out looking like, you know, the, the Euro, they come out with the Eurocentric features and they come out with more of the Afrocentric features. Um, I feel like they should always feel like they are still beautiful and we should make sure that we, you know, not only teach them, but give them the model of that as well. Like we show them that, you know, wearing your hair like this is also beautiful. You don't have to like have it blow dried or slick to the side and everything like that. You know, you can wear it out in its natural state and still be considered beauty. But I believe, I think that people say that Blue is uh, mother is biracial. She's not biracial. Beyonce. Well, I was about to say. say her dad biracial is, wear who? Uh, her she, hair is biracial. Well, well, Beyonce her hair is, is so. biracial. Her hair is nice. Because I got Cause a she really bought it. braid of hair myself. No, but she bought it. I remember when, by, I remember, I'm from Texas. So you got to remember, I remember when she was coming up through the circuit. Yeah. And, Thank and you. Her hair, the Chitlin circuit, like baby. Her. And Thank you. Like her mother was a hairdresser, one of the best hairdressers, and I still put her on anything. That Tina <laughs> was a hairdresser in Houston and to yes. the TSUs and everybody. That was the black hair salon to go to. She could fry yes. that and do a dang press on her hair like she did Beyonce's. Now, she's not biracial. We don't want to put that out there because we want to give us, we want to keep on to our race. Her yes. mother, who, who's her mother's mother, is a French descent, but that French descent that you get out of New Orleans is not, and they would digress to say if you called them white because they're still black. They're yeah. still mm -hmm. black. And, yeah. and, and, you know, and a lot of times, and I can say this because I grew up in a family like this, that my mother and my mother's mother, they get their color not because they want that color they get their color because my be, because of the things that happened to yes. my grandmother yes mm -hmm. yes okay? so come on with it you look at them mm -hmm. and you say well you know my mother was chosen to go to that school because she had that very pretty fair complexion and she had that pretty red hair and then mm -hmm. you look at me and or you say well look Tonda, you came out like this. But you look at my daddy and my mom, who was because of her color, not asked to audition to be one of the first Kilgore Rangerettes when they were trying to get one on there. They went to her and told her, we want you to be a Kilgore Rangerette. No dance, no nothing. You know, she would have been the first black one. Hmm. You know, and when you think about some of my other relatives who were the first black the first black Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, you know, and these different things. It is not because of who they were. It mm -hmm. is because of the color, but that color mm -hmm. has pain in it. It has it pain. Is. No one yes. knows. Yes. Because that color didn't come out of love. Yes. Exactly. That color came out of hurt. Exactly. Come on with it. Come on with oh, it. Oh, yeah. My cousin said that Came our great great something so was wild. I don't you, care if my great great say, hey, they're going to supposed to be like this because of this. You mm -hmm. know, like, where'd you get your color from? I've, I've heard that a lot. Where'd you get your color from? You uh, know, I have a cousin that uh, looks exactly you? like me, but she's much lighter than me. I get it well, all the time. Um, but what? it's just, it's. <laughs> Tonja, you opened up a really great conversation for me to show y'all this um, mm -hmm. last segment of this skin bleaching that's mm -hmm. going on around the world. Um, first of all, let it me is say so this. Hurtful. It is so hurtful. I, I'm, I'm happy with my complexion, but baby, please believe I'm very dark skinned on the inside, honey. Very much Matter so. Matter of fact, I love oh, yeah. chocolate. Skin. I believe yes. that it is the best and the prettiest skin that is out there. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like, okay. I told you, you really hit the nail on the head when you said there is hurt behind the skin tone, baby. Let's tell oh, yeah. the truth about it. But um, I'm gonna let me go.
go ahead and share this, y'all, because I know y'all have heard about it. I know y'all have seen some of it. But it's unbelievable mm, yeah. that people equate light skin with smart, rich, uh, pretty, um, oh, fabulous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Okay, There is a so, woman at my job. She's Jamaican and she's bleached her skin. She's lighter than all of my children. Her knuckles are dark, dark. I tell her I want to get tan because I'm too light. Why do you want to get dark? Because dark is beautiful. That's why. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Right. Okay. So, and then um, let me just say this before I play this because I don't want anybody to think that it's just us. This um, exactly. The skin whitening thing and bleaching that's going on, this is going on in every culture, y'all. Even um, the Korean culture, they want to be lighter than what they already are because they equate that to the best of the best. But watch this video, y'all. It's unbelievable how she has changed and transformed herself with these uh, bleaching products. Like, unbelievable. Like... I don't know. I don't know. And she was beautiful beforehand. So why change that? Much more beautiful. 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 Like self-hate. I, I, I consider that self-hate. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it's highest That's self-hate. Well, it's being taught. Y'all know it's being taught. You're you're not yes. beautiful if you're a darker. You see so, so we see me. That's we see that Serena. house nigga oh feel nigga mentality. He looks like he's ready for the casket. Yeah. I was scared for him. I thought he was sick. Oh I'm not. I'm serious. I thought he was sick. Wow. I really did. It's the culture. It's the culture. It's not just. It's not just white people that's doing it. It's Look us. That. The that actually we, that we pit. You know, we treat people differently because of their their culture, just as we heard about in the Willie Lynch. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I guess that's no that lie. house nigga feel nigga mentality. You know, the house niggas were lighter. Well, this is no lie, y'all. This woman actually told someone that I know that your grandbaby is gonna get treated well because she's a lighter complexion. Where my grandbaby ain't gonna get treated that good. Y'all. Right. Like that's and you're putting that on babies. You're putting that on babies. You have to teach babies better. You have to we have to teach like, our children something different so they can get rid of all this generational hatred. These this is why I always preach deconditioning from slavery needs to happen. Deconditioning from Jim Crow, from everything needs to happen. We have to be untaught so many things, so many things we have to unlearn. That are subconscious to us. Yeah. Subconscious. We do things so subconsciously. And I, I won't say I, me included. We do things so subconsciously because of how we it has been ingrained in our DNA to be done. And we have to break every single link mm -hmm. of every single chain of every single black person in America. Before well, yeah, you know, anything can like change. Uh, the skin bleaching product stuff is like a four billion dollar. But how industry. could we do that? How could that happen? That's the big question. But conversations we, we like have this. to address. Yes, we have to yes. address the problem itself. And that's no point. We, we we have to address that. Like we can't just keep on sweeping yeah. stuff up under the rug. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I have one more video I want to share with y'all because this is going to really put in perspective how this thing goes like at the end of the day i understand that some of these people are saying i'm doing skin skin bleaching because i have acne but bro you look like i don't know you look a little sick to me because i mean i don't know but but let's just watch this one day, I see my cousin with some bleachings. I actually use some for my face and I see bump them. Like, they move like three nights and they bump them gone. And then he give me this smooth looks and everything what I like. What are some of the signs of someone that is bleaching? Like, when you look at a person, what are some of the things that you can do, tell? Like, All right, something? Yes, for instance, come here, my friend, Vix. Come, Vix. <laughs> This is our bleacher. Ziggs? No. Yesterday's is a stretch mark. 
I thought it was just out. big. No, this is from the bleach. Can you get this? This yeah. is from bleaching crew? Yeah. Right. So you was you are a bleacher? He yeah, was yeah. white. What? He, he just come back black. You just come back black? She rubbed it on her face. And here, here, it burns. It burns her face well black. So every time you find some part um, with different, different color because why you like? You know, we like your knuckles. Mm, let me see your knuckles. They they claim the knuckles, knuckles will stay dark. Hard, hard to get brown, but after a while, you can get it out. So yeah, so we do see your other your old complexion there. Yeah, with your knuckles. knuckles. Yeah. Well, you don't know bleaching change of a color. Sometimes it make you red. Sometimes it make you pink. It make you brown. It make you black. Sometimes the all people are bleach you brown and get black, 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 black. Because if you look at a real white person. That person might look pink, and that pink that he has is like a stage in my bleaching. So that's a stage before I get the super white. Some people black and ugly, some girl black and ugly, you know. You know what I'm saying? So you see, when them put on bleaching, them kind of look good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> but some girl out the road, they too ugly in complexion, black, like a tar. So when I continue after that, I get super white. And it's even whiter than a white person. It's like chalky white. So do you think that it, it makes girls more attractive when they yeah. do it? When they bleach? It yeah, looks man, they, they look, look better? Pretty. Brown and pretty? Yeah, man. Better than with how they look when they're black? Sometimes, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I like brown. I like brown girls. Like brown girls you know. paint their juice, you know? That's what she likes. Yeah. So you think that a lot of the girls are doing it because guys like brown girls? Yeah. Right. Congratulations, like black. You really got to and that is something we can't tell you the secret behind it because we are white men come down here look the pretty black girl them and the black men them love white skin women we don't know what's wrong with them you know when i start getting brown <laughs> i'm not saying that i wasn't getting attention or i don't get attention even when i'm dark you know but sometimes when i get very light it seems as if the people can see me more clearer did you get more attention from girls when you oh were oh my god pull up a girl like netball man you know what I'm saying? So they were running you down. Yeah, you know, if you say a word, when you walk out white and you're clean and oh you're cool, you get a lot of girls. Well, actually, you now in Jamaica, why people, like a younger set of people, want to have like lighter complexion is for the girls. Tell the truth. Everybody want to bleach your white girls. Even you, I can tell you if you bleach right now, I'm not telling a lie. I would not, be white. I'm not telling a lie. They will be watching you. Well, all right, y'all. I'm over it. So that my head hurt so bad. <laughs> yeah. I, the all things right. I Bless would say hearts. are not fit for your show, and I'm about to go to bed because I my pressure. Yeah, is, that's and, too uh, much. Listen, that's way too, that's much. too much. I encourage y'all to go and watch the full documentary. It's called Cake Soap: Skin Bleaching in Jamaica. Y'all, it gets worse. And then what they don't tell you is that a lot of people can't afford the high dollar stuff. So they end up getting sickly, cancerous things that pop up on them. Y'all, it's horrible. It is horrible so over there. So you want to be white to get cancer? You want to bleach? I do not understand why anyone would not understand why black skin is so beautiful. It comes in so many shades and tones yes. and undertones and high tones of cheekbones. I don't understand why. That and, is and so beautiful. You heard what the white man said? You heard what the white man said? The you white, heard the white, what he said. Black woman. Yes. I don't know what they're doing. I come down here to see black, beautiful women. And they yes. Right. Not, come on. You, yeah. we, oh my God. This, this, my chest, my chest burned so bad. Because I don't understand how it happened that we have become the ugliest being, the least desirable, but every single one of y'all look like me. They want to be right. us. Right. They want to be us. to look like me. I got it for free. Just to look like how we look now. Like for yes. free. For free. Mm -hmm. DNA came free. No additives, no preservatives, no booty shots. No, none of that. My head, Jesus. <laughs> There's a whole nother conversation about how they feel about us black Americans 
and how they feel about them being from another country. So when we, we talk about how we're pitted against each other just in this nation, you talk oh, about how we're pitted against from other countries, from people from 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 countries in yes. Africa and yes. in the Bahamas, yes. where, you know, yes. all the island folks, and how they yes. feel about us as black people. So yes. about racism, we really got to get to the root of all racism because there's racism yes. not only coming from people that are white. It's oh yeah, from within. Oh yeah, our race, the American, African American, or black. You know, because I'm like, I'm not African. Black race, then when you Damn, out, give, give you me know, a virtual high five, African high five. People coming from there or from the islands, there's so much racial hatred towards yes. black Americans. We get it all over, we get it from Chinese, we get yes. it from yes. people from Jamaica, the islands, yes. the Africans, yes. the white yes. people, yes. the people yes. from Florida. Canada, the people from Russia, yes. the people. From Britain, we get it from everyone. Everybody seems to dislike yes. or hate black Americans. We have no so roots, as know. they say. Oh we God. don't know where we come from. Wait, that's what they say. Hard. That's why they don't. They don't know what tribe we come from. What 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 our true tongue is. What 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 in our tribe. blood. From, that's why they don't exactly. recognize us. Happy, but I don't know if that's going to Because my mama black and my daddy black, and that's what I am mixed with. Black. Right. So black black, 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 black pride. Okay? Black, black on black pride. There was no control oh, yeah. that we had. There wasn't a button that they that they pushed, you know, for, for my parents. They didn't have the money to go out there and build them a child. Hmm. <laughs> Girl, Come on now. buy one off eBay. Come on now. Okay. No, no thank okay. you. Okay. It, 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 I ain't like he it, it, on the shores. It's a whole nother story, but it's gonna be a bunch of folk children that look like me that's gonna be out there. We're gonna have to open up something, do something, because who is gonna adopt them? Where I got no, that's right, I, I do. I got I, I got one. I, I got one. Know. Well, we're gonna I need to open up a lot love. more doors because it's um nine months down the road from now, we're gonna have a lot of children. As long as it looks like me, I'll get I'll get me some stack. Um, some stack cribs, like you got stack bunk beds. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some stack cribs, just pop them in there, like little oven rolls and stuff. Like, go ahead, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. Yeah, go to bed. Okay. okay, all right, night, so, night. so ladies, okay, so this is gonna be our last question of uh tonight's panel, and um, uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for your educated minds. Like, listen, listen, we definitely gonna have to do this again. I loved it, okay. but. Okay, yes. so I'll start it off. The question is, what move do we need to make to change this narrative? I myself, I feel like we're going to have to take it all the way back to when we got the most hatred in America, period. And that's when the Bloods and the Crips were starting all of these different programs for um, our community. And also when uh, Huey um, started the Black Panthers, we're going to have to start our own organizations Correct. and we're going to yes. have to pull people in and we're going to have to decondition their mind. We're gonna, it's like washing hell, honey. You got to get mm -hmm. it clean, mm -hmm. baby, so we can mm -hmm. teach them the right way because y'all know that America has made us lazy upon who we are. Like we don't really know who we are at this point. And when I say we, I mean as a people. But I really feel like, like we need leaders. Listen, I love going to church, the church that I go to now. But let's take these churches mm -hmm. and get in the pulpit and preach about self-worth. Instead of mm -hmm. yes. condemn, condemning people, you're going to hell and you're being banished. And uh, Luke the 15th, eight, yep, baby, look at here. Can we talk and about something God that's going to actually not, help us? Was not right. transmitted for us. Can I say something about the church real quick? I was yes, watching please. the show. I, I, forget, I, forget about, I forget what show it was. And they were talking about black people and Christianity. And what she said sat with me so deeply. She said that we have been taught that suffering is yes. the way to yes. yes. That sat yes. with me so heavy because all the 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 
the malarkey, the everything that black people go through, yes. praising their white Jesus. Hmm. They the same Jesus your slave masters pray to. The same Jesus, the same book that they use to keep you a slave that you pray to every single day keeps you a slave. It keeps you suffering. And it does not allow you to elevate and understand who you truly are to be. Because guess what? Who did we pray to beforehand? But hold up one second. Last right. week, you definitely told us that they gave us a separate Bible. Thank you. To mm -hmm. swear on yes, when we went to indeed. court. So that already let you know that they gave us a whole different religion. Like they praying to one God and they telling us to pray to this God because we got to listen to them. Like, no, 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 and no. Yes. I rebuke in the name oh, of black Jesus. Okay. Call him Sky Daddy. Yes. You don't, yes. You don't, we don't, we don't call him Jesus and everything. He's just Sky Daddy. Yes. Okay. The big J in the sky. Okay. I got you. Well, I'm, I'm finished with my thoughts on that. Miss Singleton, do you want to give your thoughts on that question? What do we got to do, y'all, to change this narrative? I feel like, um, like banking off of what you said, you know, we do need to come together and we do need to not only like learn from each other, but we do need to like actually, um, you know, not notice the problem that is at hand and work on not having it be a problem for generations on coming, you know, because I, I feel like these children now, um, I feel like their, their upbringing shouldn't be like how our upbringings were. Like they shouldn't have to go to school and feel like, Oh, you know, just because this person is lighter, they're going to get the better position at this uh, at this, at this work or anything like that. They, I, I think that they should just, um, oh, well, we should just like come together and really just like work on that whole problem. Because, um, once we do that, I feel like we would be more stronger as a, as a collective. I yeah. agree. And that's what the real generational curses come from right there, honey. Mm -hmm. Sunshine. First and foremost, we as people have to do the work for ourselves. We have to recognize our preconceived notions about our own people because of the things that have been ingrained into us. Break that within yourself. It takes work. It's a hard. It's hard work to do. It's hard to recognize. It's doable. And once you do the work for yourself, you pass that message along to anybody that can listen. Thanks. And start at home with your children, because yes. that is those are the people that are most important. If you, I, and my kids, Miata, you know, we don't play no games. I take great pride in teaching my children self work. That's another problem. We have to self, self, self is a problem. We have no identity of self. And we have to learn who we as a people are for ourselves, not who they have told us that we are. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. once again, when you have a when you have a, your beginning be as traumatic as slavery, that's all you live in is that trauma. So once you, once we as a people heal from that trauma, we can move forward to becoming the people that we were before slavery. Exactly. Exactly. Nikki Six. Um, I am in agreement again with all of you ladies. I do feel that, you know, it starts with each one teach one. Um, you know, we have to motivate as many as we can to tap into their inner true selves, to tap into their true history, to understand again, like, you know, like all of you ladies have said, our history started way before slavery. I don't even want, I don't even like to embed slavery into my children's head. My, okay. me and my children are learning. Yeah, we, we started with Kemet. Okay. I mean, my children are starting with Kemet and I'm going to work them up to slavery and what that was because I don't want their minds to be programmed. That yeah, we started yes. to do. You understand yes. me? So I'm, I'm teaching my kids 
beyond that and we'll work our way up to that era. But that yes. is not the area for you to dwell upon because that that is what have had us, like Malcolm said, hoodwink, bamboozle, and led astray for all these years. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. And it must, you know, it must yes. cease. It, just, it has to cease. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, and that's just where I'm at. You know, anyone that's willing to listen, anyone that's on this show that's listening, you know, please tap and tap into your tap into who you really are. You are you are way beyond Masters Plantation back down in South Carolina and Alabama and Florida. No, we go way, 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 way beyond that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Your, your, yes. your, 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 your history goes way beyond Ancestry.com. You know, and Come I tell my now. children, that you have you to tap into your it. inner self. You have to walk yes. into your truth. And part of walking into your truth is walking into your God. So, oh, yeah. you know, I, I just I, I'm really big on that is just really trying to, you know, let our people know that, hey, we, we are gods. You, you're still a god. You, you got to bring them out. Mm-hmm. You got to tap into you got to tap into that inner you. You got to you got you got to know your history and understand who you are, what you are, what you came from, you are, what, what you can become. Yes. Yes. You know, you know, and I, I get so bothered and I get so fired up when it comes to the subject of my people because, you know, when they say divide and conquer, that's what they did to us. And we got to put our pieces back together because we're like scattered beads on a broken chain. And yeah, that's kind of hard to do put it. back. But we got we yeah. to work on it. We got mm, to do yes. it. We got to do it's it. Being black, we all family. Every single one right. of us. Black in America, exactly. we are all family. Every single last one of us. Exactly. All right, Miss Brown. Mm-hmm. Well, pose that question again so I can go make sure I answer just the question. <laughs> okay, what <laughs> steps do we need to take to move forward from this Willie Lynch syndrome? Because it is plaguing us right now. Okay, so what we need to do is we, we do need to remember where we came from, but we don't need to dwell in the past. Yes. We need to remember where we came from and not dwell in the past. We need to remember the things that we have gone through and have had to look back and say, well, maybe that wasn't that. What was that that we what was that that we were taught? Maybe that wasn't the right way. My mom and daddy did everything that they could and they thought they were doing the right way. But I know now there is a better way. Mm-hmm. So what we need to stop doing is to, first of all, stop stop raising our children not not saying don't raise them with religion but stop raising our children to these king james standards they say you can't do this you Ooh, can't do this. You condemn the hate. you're gonna do this that and that and so they have already have put themselves in trying to master something and trying to live to a book that wasn't written for us mm, we need to right. teach our children love compassion self-worth and to dream beyond yes that they can do whatever it is that they want to do if you want to fly a plane one day you're gonna fly a plane yes don't teach them well what god has for you is for you no yeah what god has for you is for you but what you want for yourself is what is for you what you go out there and work for is what's for you exactly out there and understand that you need to hold your head up high you need to speak Mm -hmm. clearly you need to articulate what it is that you want. When somebody yes. says that this is what you want and you don't want it, you need to speak up and say, that's not what I said. That's not what I want. Mm-hmm. You know, we teach our children that just because you're going into these schools and then into these classrooms, when the teacher does something that is making you feel any kind of way, you need to come home because you got a mama that's and a daddy that's going to support you, that's going to get them teachers put in their right space or in their right place. Not thinking that, well, my teacher is doing this and I'm just doing this and my teacher is doing all this things. You need to, we need to be more active in our child's yes. lives, we need to more, be yes. act, more active in their education. We need to go up to those schools and not act like we don't have any home training and be able to articulate what it is that we are going to get for our child, what they are there for and what we expect and what we are going to do to support the teacher as well. Mm-hmm. That's if right. they no school work home, you go out there and you get the school work. You create the school work so that your child can be educated, so that they're not left behind. Mm-hmm. We need to more. We need to take a more proactive approach to raising our children, and not let 
teachers and these schools and the streets raise our kids. That's what we need to do. Come on with it. Listen, mm -hmm. I love each and every answer because everything that you ladies said is absolutely truth. And we need all of that to move forward as a whole. Like, okay. All right, Miss Bobby. Miss Bobby said, amen. All right. Mm -hmm. You can, if, if you jump in a car, okay. And you just start driving you're probably going to crash because first and foremost you need to learn how to drive a car so teach your child how to drive in this life honey mm -hmm. and don't mm -hmm. let nobody else teach them you don't know what they're going to show them and we all need to work together the brakes got to work together with the uh with the pads and the, the engine got to work together with the doggone structure of the car i mean all this stuff got to work together y'all it do yeah, yes. do. Teach your children how to think, not what to think. That is exactly important. that's key. How to think, not what right. to think. Teach them yeah. to be this to the power of discernment. Teach them like when my kids go to the doctor, they're like, "Mom, what's wrong with them?" I don't know. Ask them. You understand? Yeah. They're two years old. They can talk. They know what's wrong. We have to learn to speak ourselves because we have been taught to be silent for so yes. long. Yes. Oh yes. 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 And it's nothing wrong with having a voice. At all. It's There's not nothing what wrong you with say. not having a voice. Right. And it's then not you can find that voice early. Not, yes. not later. Yes. And let, yes. Let's children find their voices early. You yes. Know? Mm -hmm. And not later. Yes. Cause y'all know uh a lot of the times uh we were talk, hush, don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not mad at any of the ancestors because they did what they were taught. But it's time to unlearn what you have learned and bring it back. Bring it back now because that stuff has not worked for us, y'all. I'm sorry. And, and who, who made up this? Like, if I have to eat one more green and black eyed pea at the beginning of the year. Look, look, that stuff be good. Mind your business. I love it. But who <laughs> made it up? Mind your, now you're going too far. You're going too far. And no, no, no. And, 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 and them good old chitlins. Now, Brandon, you, you know, get on. Now, now, see, no, no, time no, 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 mm, no, not the swine of Babylon. Listen. Cut it out, be not partake of the swine of Babylon. We can eat good, but we gotta throw out all this <laughs> wrong mentality that oh, it's yeah. gonna rain down on us if we eat all of this, baby. It's gonna rain down on you if you go out there and work hard, baby. Period. That's I'm still my right black eyed peas and my greens and my rice. I don't care what you say. I don't care. Oh, well, listen, you can eat it and okay. I'm going to eat it too, but I'm just saying. <laughs> that's the wrong way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's the wrong way this mentality. Exactly. <laughs> make these people think that if you do these certain things, things are going to happen. Because I've been doing it a long time, y'all, and I ain't seen no results yet. Okay. I'm well, just saying. Say you ain't make the greens right. And your I, rice will fry. You probably use margarine and not butter. That's what that's 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 that's, that's, that's you fry. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't soaked your rice. That's why you ain't getting your blessings. Mind your business. No, okay. no, no, no. Okay. These superstitions <laughs> got to go. You ain't okay. fluff the rice right. You use the fuck, you use the spoon of the fork. Gotta fluff it, fluff it. Okay, well, look, before we go, Miss Led, do you have anything to take us out with? Uh -uh. Oh, that's what be silent. It's a moment of silence. Oh, I'm so sorry. My microphone was on mute. I apologize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do apologize. I do apologize. And then I was eating some French fries. I apologize, y'all. But um, <laughs> yes, I told you. Tell on yourself. Nikki. <laughs> <on> yourself. <laughs> I was. I was. <laughs> um, yes, Brandy. I told you that I would do you one piece tonight. Um, and I think it goes well with the topic of discussion. Um, this piece that um, I'm going to do, it's actually a two part piece. Um, but I did again, this is an old piece that we did talking about the William Lynch letter and things like that back in the day, but it's called Strictly for My Niggas. And this piece is, it's really asking a question about what is the definition of a nigga. Um, because I, I, I use the term when I'm referring to racism, things like that, but that is not a term that I like to use at all. 
So mm-hmm. this piece that I, I wrote called Strictly for My Niggas, I'm going to give you this piece and I'm going to give it to you nice and slow. It is a pretty fast tongue twister, but I do want you all to understand where I'm coming from. So I'm going to break it down nice and slow. This is strictly for the niggas that be pulling triggers to gain figures, but never figured the crime doesn't pay. Some niggas ain't here today because another nigga felt that a nigga got in his way. Say, nigga, you stepping on my goddamn feet. The blood of another nigga spilled in the street. Niggas might as well be grave niggas. Grave diggers, niggas will nigga kill another nigga. Niggas ain't got no love. Niggas ain't got no shame. Niggas get they roll on the ride till they die. All the name of some bullshit game, but bow their heads when the officers ask their name. Hey, nigga. Niggas fuck hope and suck dope and choke on reality and smoke those of their nationality. Niggas don't know fact from fallacy. Niggas win and out their heads when black folks speak of a revolution, but don't know what's really going on because niggas part of the pollution. Wake up, nigga. You are your own oppression. Niggas ain't learning no lesson. Niggas are black folks. It's genocide. They glad we die quicker. Think, nigga. Niggas are the reason all of our people of color are stereotyped. Attention, brothers. Attention, sisters. It's being a nigga being black or it's being black being a nigga. Nigga. Mm-hmm. Ah, That's it. Come on with it. Come on, hey, with hey, it. Come on with it. Come on with it. Come on with it. So thank listen. you. Make nigga. sure. Yes, yes. Use your, <laughs> use your brain on that one, everybody. Listen. And yeah. tell somebody else to tell somebody else, baby. Tell somebody. You seriously. Tell somebody. <laughs> look, Miss, look, Miss Bobby said, bravo, bravo, bravo. Thank you, Miss Bobby. Thank you, Miss Bobby. Yes. So that concludes our show, y'all. But I definitely want to thank you ladies once again for coming through and showing love like you did. Because at the end of the day, um, we can do things together without there being a bunch of spats. And I'm mad at you. And you looking at my husband. And uh, you think you somebody. And you think you cute because you light skin. Baby, that stuff is a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. That's a thing of the past. So with that being said, let's move forward in life, y'all. And uh, subscribe to the channel, everyone. Make sure you tell somebody else. And with that being said, Millionaire Pending. Much love and appreciation.